Good afternoon to, to you guys who are in Seattle. Uh, good evening for, for myself. Uh, my name is Nelson Diaz. I'm gonna give a, a, a talk that is certainly very different from the ones I've seen uh, this afternoon. It's more like a, an overview of what, I've, of what I've been doing with programming languages and how Chapel uh, fit into it. Uh, okay, uh, I'm a civil engineer. I do most research in hydrology and uh, atmospheric turbulence. And uh, a lot of my research is about data processing, huge amounts of data because turbulence generates lots of data and a little bit of numerical methods uh, like computational fluid dynamics every now and then. I started learning uh, programming languages with Fortran 66, I think, on a PTP 11 with punched cards. Um, I actually learned to program when I when I learned Pascal uh, a couple of years later. Um, in, in, in my research, I, I, I used a lot of stuff. I used VAX Fortran, which is a predecessor to Fortran 9X, Modula 2, Turbo Pascal uh, in the DOS days, uh, C and Fortran for a long time. Uh, most, for, most of my research career was done on, on C and Fortran 9X every now and then. Then uh, uh, circa 2008, I moved to Python. And then uh, now for two years, I've been using um, uh, Chapel. Uh, I don't have any experience with supercomputers, super clusters, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this is strictly a, a, a view uh, of a person who, who works on the desktop. Now it's subjective, there, there is some degree of subjective ideas and, and adjectives in the, at least in the, in the early literature. So you find words like harmful, like uh, evil, and like uh, not my favorite programming language. So I will draw on this tradition a little bit, but just a little bit. I don't have any experience with C++. I, I'm, I'm not trained or able to do really object-oriented programming. And most of all, I'm not a computer scientist. So I'm really a user of programming languages to do my, my daily stuff. So uh, from this perspective, what is, that I want, what is it that I want in a, in a good programming language? And believe me, I've been looking for a good programming language for a long time. It should be easy enough uh, to learn. Uh, it should be wide enough, uh, have enough constructs so that I ex can express any algorithm that I need uh, easily. And also I can handle large quantities of data easily. And uh, uh, it has to be fast because I usually work with large amounts of data and this can, be, can become a problem sometimes. Um, okay, so if I compare the three that I used most in, in along my career, which is from the earliest to the to, to the oldest, which are Python, C, and, and Fortran, uh, Python is easy. Python is is good to work with data, basically in my case because of NumPy, but it's not fast at all. It's it's very frequent that I do need a four that I do need to iterate over indices and stuff like that. And, and Python is a no, uh, is, is not good for that unless I put on something else like Numba or, or, or some other stuff. C is easy to learn more or less because it's low level. It doesn't have a lot of uh, facilities to work with data because it's low level, but it is fast. And Fortran is large because it's old, basically. So it, it has a lot of stuff in there. Uh, modern Fortran is, is good to work with data and it is fast. Uh, so most of my colleagues usually lean on Fortran, prefer Fortran. And Chapel is a yes for, for all three uh, criteria here, but it is large. Um, so my whole point here, or, or my main point here is that there is an opportunity for Chapel to be a kind of universal language, uh, not only a language for clusters and supercomputers and HPC, 
but a language for everybody, like me, the, the, the common person that only has a desktop, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I, I believe so after working with it for two years, uh, it can replace all of the others with a lot of advantages, in my opinion. Again, it's subjective, uh, but it needs to be advertised. It, it, be, it needs to be made easier to install, I think, uh, for, for common people. Uh, and uh, it, it certainly needs better overall tutorials, introductory texts and things like that uh, for people to, to have an easier entrance to the language, I think. Uh, okay, um, it has my, my view of Chapel strengths are like that. It's fast. Parallelization is really easy. Um, I didn't know I could get so much from my desktop until I used it. Um, you can start an array with any value, which is really good. And why? Because sometimes the algorithm is natural, is a natural zero-based algorithm. Sometimes it's a natural one-based algorithm. Sometimes it's something else. So uh, it's good to have this uh, ability. It's something that always bothered me in C and in Python. Uh, and it's modular. Uh, as modular as Python is, you all know this, I don't have to, to preach to the choir. Uh, so uh, I found it very easy to do the same stuff that I was doing in, in, in Python. Just write the modules, uh, put some uh, environment variable pointing to where my, my libraries are and, and use them easily. Now, um, it has generic uh, arguments uh, for the procedures. This is not something that I use so much, but it, every now and then it's useful. and. Uh, the, the, the distinctive feature to me of Chapel is domains. Domains are something that were something very new to me. They make it easier to declare many, many arrays with a, with a common domain, which is very common in, in, in my programming uh, experience. Sparse domains are a must. They're really good when you have sparse matrices and stuff like that. And associative domains are essentially dictionaries or awk arrays. And they are also very useful in, in, in many cases, interestingly. So domains uh, uh, are, are something that Chapel added to my view of programming. And, and my experience is that they have been really helpful. Uh, by now I have essentially translated all my little libraries to, to Chapel. I have a dozen of them. Um, all of them existed in some sort before Chapel, so I translated them. And whenever I could improve on them, putting in some parallel processing or something like that, I did it. Um, I'll give you two examples of what I've done. One is a, a simple solution of Laplace's equation with uh, successive overrealization. I did it in my desktop. It has two, 12 logical cores. And, um, I ran a serial version and a parallel version, both written in Chapel, and I got approximately a, a speed up of approximately six, six times. So the number of approximate number of physical, not logical cores. In some other cases, I, I got better. I got up to 11, 11.5, 10 uh, times speed ups and things like that. The other thing that, that uh, was one of my, my new uh, experiences in, in Chapo is that I wanted something like a list in Python, but I didn't want to grow a domain for every new index. So I wrote this, this little thing here that deals with the domain. And whenever the index that I want is the next uh, to last in, in the existing range, I grow the domain, say, by 50%. And so I have enough space in the array for, for the new elements. And, and this was... Um, an interesting experience. I, I didn't know I could do stuff like that. And, and it's pretty easy to do actually in, in, in Chapel. Uh, I'm getting to the end of my talk. I think I sped up a little bit. Um, I have a wish list. Uh, one of my, my, my wishes is that Chapel had something like Fortran that I could re-index uh, an array in the argument, just like you see here. I wish I could say A is an array from here inside this procedure, it's going to be an array from one to N and automatically I know what the size of the array is because it's N. Um, I also wish I had 
the possibility to declare a procedure as an argument to another procedure, as I have to do, for instance, if I do the trapezoid rule in, uh, in numerical integration. And it's not so important, but a little faster compilation would be nice. I know people are working on it. So my last words for Chapo are words of praise. Um, it's very elegant. Uh, it's the closest to the best programming language that I ever got to. Uh, it's easy actually to, to catch errors and debug, uh, surprisingly easy. And uh, it's fast enough uh, for my needs. So I'm pretty happy with it uh, now. And, and that's all. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I'm here. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Nelson. Um, I think we have time for one quick question if someone has one. I could if nobody else does. I do add a comment and a question. Uh, so first of all, I really enjoyed your talk. Thanks very much for giving it. Um, with respect to the re-indexing at procedure declaration, we actually had that at the beginning of the project. And what we found was that we were re-indexing things too aggressively all the time, even when they didn't need it, and it was adding overhead. So we ended up saying, let's make that not the default, and we'll come back to it someday when people want it. And that, for the most part, I would say I haven't been very aware of people wanting it, so it's good to hear from you that you do. And the question I had for you was, um, I was intrigued that you called out sparse domains as being of interest because I think they're a concept that most of us really like conceptually, but we don't think they're really all that useful or efficient yet or not as good as they should be. And I was curious, are you using them in your code or is it more like you're happy that they're there and you hope to use them someday, would you say? Um, yeah, thank you, Brad. Yeah, actually, I am. Uh, I don't know if it's more efficient than the, the usual stuff. Uh, but I'm using it to, to solve tri-diagonal systems. Okay. And Fortran people will use three arrays, one for each diagonal. Uh, and I've I've programmed it with you know with your with Chapel's uh, sparse um, ideas. I, I I haven't compared them with with the other the more conventional way of doing it. I could sometime, but I actually use it. Yes. Okay. That's great. And it's interesting you mentioned tridiagonal because, as you may know, one of the concepts behind Chapel is that you can create your own array implementations. And early on in the project, we talked about, like, for example, maybe we would want a special tridiagonal layout for sparse domains that would actually use the three arrays under the covers, but give you this sort of two dimensional abstract index space uh, abstraction, if you will. And it sounds like that, that's something that, if we were to follow through with that, that that might be useful to you as well, potentially. Certainly, it's used a lot in, in simple but very uh, common uh, numerical processing. So uh, for, for partial differential equations, so yes, it would certainly be useful. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks again for the talk. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Brett.